Paris, the city of light. From the Eiffel Tower to the Arc de Triomphe, this jewel of Europe is home to magnificent monuments that draw tourists from all over the world. Many of them come to gaze in wonder at the spectacular churches like Notre Dame. But just a mile from that famed house of God sits another stunning place of worship unknown to many, the Grand Mosque of Paris. The Grand Mosque of Paris is a wonderful structure on the left bank. It is the central focus of Islam in Paris, and indeed, it is probably the most distinct and important Muslim architectural institution in all of Europe. The Grand Mosque was built in 1926 as a token of gratitude for the 100,000 North African Muslims who fought and died for France in World War I. It is a marvel of design and beauty. But there is another hidden facet of the Grand Mosque, a mysterious legend whispered for decades, but known only to a few. The details of individual cases are very difficult to identify. What are the secrets locked inside the Grand Mosque of Paris? And what role did this house of worship play in one of the most wrenching episodes in modern history? Nine months into World War II, German forces conquer France and set up the Vichy government. The collaborationist regime assists in carrying out Adolf Hitler's Nazi program, which includes rounding up Jews and sending them to concentration camps. To help carry out their plan, the Nazis attempt to recruit local Muslims. The German strategy was to try to reach out to a significant Muslim community in France to try to win them over to the German side. The Germans begin with Kadur ben Gabrit, a well-respected Muslim elder and the head of the Grand Mosque. In public, ben Gabrit is friendly and cooperative with the Nazis. But privately, he is hatching a secret and dangerous plot. The Grand Mosque will hide Jews from the Nazis. The mosque gave Jews certificates of Muslim identity. You could pass as Muslim if you had this birth certificate or certificate from the mosque. While some Jews evade detection with the fake documents, the mosque simply doesn't have enough to go around. So Ben Gabrit ratchets things up, this time using the mosque itself. The underground pathways underneath the mosque, which led out to other streets and other neighborhoods, were places where Jews and others were protected. Ben Gabrit's plan to hide Jews in these passageways is soon put to the test. There was one very celebrated testimony from a gentleman uh, named Albert Asulin. Asulin, a North African Jew, escapes from a German prisoner of war camp. After days of traveling in secret, he arrives in Paris and makes his way to the Grand Mosque. But in the Nazi-occupied city, Asulin is far from safe. While he and other Jews are hiding inside, German soldiers suddenly raid the mosque. The mosque would trigger a series of lights that would flash when the Germans were about to enter the premises of the mosque, and Jews would recognize these lights and would find hiding places within the catacombs, behind closet doors. Asulin uses these catacombs to escape, owing his life to the Grand Mosque. It wasn't so much Muslims saving Jews as an interreligious act of faith. It was really Algerians and Moroccans and Tunisians helping other Algerians, Moroccans and Tunisians, despite a religious difference. But the mosque's commitment to saving Jews is about to face its greatest challenge yet. In wartime Paris, a pop singer named Salim Halali is a big hit in town. Halali was one of the most famous singers of the day very known in the Parisian nightlife. Halali is also a Jew. And when the Nazis decide to seize him, 
the Grand Mosque of Paris becomes his last desperate hope for survival. But can the mosque help save one of the most famous men in France? France, the Grand Mosque of Paris. At the height of World War II, the mosque is secretly hiding Jews right under the noses of the occupying Nazis. There was a natural willingness of some of the leaders of the mosque to assist countrymen who were facing severe, life-threatening danger because of the Nazi occupation. That danger extends to the Muslims themselves, including the mosque's leader, Kadur Ben Gabrit, who is about to put everything on the line to help save someone seemingly impossible to hide, a famous Jewish pop singer named Salim Halali. He was Jewish from Algeria. He thought that he would be immune from the Germans because he was so famous. But of course, he wasn't. And he got word that the Germans were going to come after him. Ben Gabrit secretly supplies Halali with fake papers that say he is a Muslim. And then, Ben Gabrit takes an even bolder step. He had a tombstone at the Muslim cemetery outside Paris, engraved with Halali's father, so that Halali could say when the Germans came after him, see, I'm, I'm, I'm Muslim, I'm not Jewish, just go to check the cemetery, you'll see where my, where my father is buried. Surprisingly, the Nazis are fooled, and Halali survives the war. And he, to his dying day, and you can check the obituaries of Halali, thanked Ben Gabrit for saving his life. Ben Gabrit, for his part, keeps silent on the mosque's role in hiding Jews. When he dies in 1954, he is buried in a wall of the mosque, taking the secrets of the rescue mission with him. Today, the Grand Mosque of Paris attracts both worshipers and visitors from all over the world. And its heroic efforts still resonate for all who walk through its doors. It's a story that everybody can appreciate because it's a universal story of rescue and protection at a time of intense danger. And that brings a very faraway culture right at home.